All right, question four, let's have a look at it. According to Health Canada, the mean number of cigarettes smoked per day by individuals who are daily smokers is 18.1. Okay, so on average, people smoke 18.1 cigarettes a day. A researcher wonders if retired adults smoke less than the general population of daily smokers. So she obtains a random sample of 60 retired adults who are current smokers and records the number of cigarettes smoked on a randomly selected day. The data result in a sample mean of 16.8 cigarettes with a standard deviation of 4.7, and I'm assuming that's the standard deviation of the sample. Is there sufficient evidence at an alpha of 0.01 level of significance to conclude that retired adults who are daily smokers smoke less than the general population of daily smokers? Okay, very similar to, I think, the last problem, we are comparing the average number of cigarettes smoked by retired adults, we want to know, in this case, is it less than the general population? Now remember your null statement, and with the null statement you got to specify what parameter you're testing, in our case it's the mean. For the general population, people smoke on average 18.1 cigarettes in a given day. So if it turns out to be this, retirees smoke same as general population. We want to know whether or not retirees uh, smoke less than 18.1. Geez, they got more time during the day to probably smoke more. All right, uh, less than 18.1. So if it turns out to be this, retirees smoke, yeah, you know what I mean, smoke less than general population. Okay, again, Let's stick in our level of significance. We want to make our decisions at a 1% level of significance. This number is telling me what to compare my p-value to. All right, we're talking about, again, population means. So if it's test for a mean, it's either a one sample z or a one sample t. T's we haven't touched yet. And in this case, we have 60 retired adults. We're not told the true population standard deviation, because I'm assuming that value up there is the sample. But because sample size is 60, then I'm allowed to use the one sample z. Okay, and again, I got this baby worked out. Sticking it in here. All right, my test statistic is, again, it's a z. Take my sample mean, which is 16.8. And I'm comparing that to the mean in my statement of claim, 18.1. Again, I don't know population standard deviation. I'm going to estimate it using sample standard deviation of 4.7. Got my sample size, do the math, and it works out to negative 2.14. And this is a lower tail test. I want to know, is the mean lower than this, smaller? So when I go to get my p-value this time, the p-value will represent the area under the standard normal curve to the left. I want to know is it less than negative 2.14. So if I go to mini tab to get this answer, and I could go to my tables, but again I'm too lazy for that. Let me go probability distribution plot, view to probability, this is the standard normal distribution. We just calculated a z-score, or z-statistic of two, negative 2.14, and it was a lower tail test, so I need the area in the left tail. Click OK, and that actually represents my p-value right there. OK, I'm going to copy and paste this, hold on a second now, into my document, and come back one second. All right, I got that. Now, let's close that. Nope. And let's go back to our uh, question. And yeah, I'll look at the conclusion in a minute. So this illustrates graphically what my p-value is. And if I want to type that up, my p-value represents 
the probability that z is less than negative 2.14 and here it is. Okay, again I didn't ask it in the question but really uh, typically I want students to be able to do this in mini tab as well. So I come back into my mini tab stat basic statistics we're carrying out a one sample z. All right this time we don't have any raw data we've got the summarized data. Our sample size we had 60 retirees on average they smoke 16.8 cigarettes on a given day and we're using the standard deviation from the sample of 4.7. We want to perform the hypothesized hypothesis, test of hypothesis. We want to know is the mean equal to 8.1, the same as the general population, or actually the question is, is it less than the general population? And your confidence level, um, you can ignore this right now because we're not doing a two-sided test, we're not going to get a two-sided interval. There's some reference in your notes about one-sided intervals. I'm not getting into that in this course, so I'm not even going to talk about it. Okay, now let's copy and paste what we have from here into our Word document and now let's go back and compare. So by hand we calculate negative 2.14, by hand we calculate area under the curve to the left of a z-score of negative 2.14, that's my p-value, and Minitab tells me the same thing. Just make sure that you go back and you read what's here, so what's here corresponds with what you got written up here. Okay, equal to 18.1 .1 versus less than, you're plugging in your sample standard deviation, Minitab does the test, and it gives me the test statistic, and it gives me the p-value. Alright, the question, the conclusion is always, is p a value that is smaller than alpha? Well, what do we got? We got 0.016, oops, 1.6. How does that compare to our alpha, which is our level of significance, which we set up here is 0.01. So is this value, is 0.016 a smaller value or possibly equal to 0.01? Well, this value is definitely not smaller than that, it's bigger. The answer is no. And if the answer is no, we fail to reject our null statement. Okay, we're failing to reject our null statement. Well, that's not good enough. We can say that, yes, we do need to say that, at least for this course. But we also need to make a conclusion in terms of the context of this problem. And what would my conclusion be? I'm writing down here results of one sample Z test, that's what I carried out tell my reader the test statistic, the p-value, conclude that the number of cigarettes smoked per day, actually I should say that the average, average, the average, A -V -E -R -A -G, that the average number of cigarettes smoked per day by retired adult smokers, and I give myself some summary stats of my sample, is not significantly lower than the general population of smokers and they smoke on average 18.1 cigarettes per day. So according to the stats, that 16.8, which is lower than the 18.1 on the face of it, is not statistically significantly lower. Not if I'm going to make my decision at a 1% level of um, significance. And there we have it for that one.